in the previous lecture uh, we discussed about uh, the different uh, forms in which the equation of motion of a single degree freedom system subjected to a support excitation can be written. Uh, they are uh, the first uh, equation is uh, written in terms of the relative displacements of the uh, mass with respect to the support and uh, it is a second order differential equation uh, with the relative motions as unknown. On the right hand side of the equation uh, we have uh, the mass times the ground acceleration. Uh, the second uh, form of equation was in terms of the total displacement of the structure uh, in which uh, the second order differential equation had uh, the total motions uh, as the unknowns. On the right hand side uh, we had uh, the displacement that is the stiffness multiplied by the ground displacement uh, plus the damping coefficient multiplied by the ground velocity. Uh, then these two equations uh, can also be written in, in a state space form uh, that is uh, in a form in which the second order differential equation is written in terms of a set of coupled first order differential equation. The state uh, of the system is defined by a vector consisting of uh, displacement and velocity and both uh, uh, the uh, state space equations uh, uh, can be written one in terms of uh, the relative displacement other uh, in terms of the total displacement. After that uh, we uh, discussed about the equation of motion uh, for a multi degree freedom system. Uh, in which we classified uh, the multi degree of freedom system under two classes. First one was single support excitation and the second one was uh, multi support excitation. For the multi uh, sing single support excitation uh, the base of the structure moves as a rigid body. As a result of that the displacements uh, which are induced at the different flow levels of the frame, they consist of the relative displacement of the structure with respect to the base caused by the inertia forces and uh, the second part is the quasi static displacement uh, produced due to the movement of the support as a rigid body. And uh, this uh, rigid body movement uh, therefore produces the same quasi static displacement at all supports. The, uh, on the right hand side uh, we have an uh, influence coefficient vector or influence coefficient matrix uh, which can be written from inspection in most of the cases. And uh, these vector or the matrix uh, consists of uh, either uh, 1 1 1 1 1 or 1 0 1 0 1 0 um, like that. And in most of the cases or most of the problems uh, these uh, influence coefficient vector can be uh, easily written without performing any calculation. Uh, then we uh, explained uh, the uh, equation of motion of a uh, three dimensional frame asymmetric frame uh, with a rigid slab on the top of it. Uh, the idea was to illustrate uh, that in writing down the equation of motion the mass matrix. Uh, need not be always a diagonal mass matrix as it is uh, thought uh, in the case of point, lump, point mass lumping. Uh, it was shown that depending upon the 
degree of freedom uh, that is chosen, uh, the mass matrix could be a diagonal mass matrix, the mass matrix also could be a fully populated mass matrix or a coupled mass matrix. Uh, we continue with that uh, to show that uh, for also other kinds of structures, this kind of scenario may happen and that is the point lump mass matrix may, may uh, be also a uh, coupled mass matrix in place of a diagonal mass matrix. Uh, for that we uh, take the example of uh, a pitch roof portal frame and uh, for that pitch roof portal frame the mass matrix is shown over here. Uh, the uh, mass matrix here is a coupled mass matrix uh, uh, that is the off diagonal terms are not 0, uh, they are having some value and the influence coefficient vector corresponding to that is 1 and 0. Uh, the problem uh, for which uh, this mass matrix exists uh, is shown over here. Uh, this is the uh, pitch roof uh, portal frame. Uh, this is the pitch roof portal frame uh, which uh, which is shown here and one can uh, model it in two ways. The first model uh, is this one in which uh, the degrees of freedom, kinematic degrees of freedom are the rotations at this point, rotation at this point, rotation at this point. And uh, if we assume the inextensibility of the members, then two translational degrees of freedom uh, will be existing uh, and one can choose it in different ways. For model 1 we choose the displacement degree of freedom 1 over here and the other at the top uh, that is the, the vertical motion of the crown. In the second model uh, the uh, two translational degrees of freedom are chosen uh, one here as a horizontal degree of freedom and the other here as a horizontal degree of freedom. And uh, for both one can write down the mass matrices and uh, these mass matrices uh, as we will see will be uh, a coupled mass matrix. Uh, for deriving uh, the mass matrix uh, for this particular uh, two cases, uh, let us consider uh, this figure. In this figure, uh, we uh, have a the frame and in this frame uh, what we do is that uh, we uh, give a unit displacement at this point and locking the vertical movement uh, of this particular point. As a result of that, uh, this moves, uh, this point also moves and this moves also oh, uh, horizontally without any vertical displacement. The displacement is given such that a unit acceleration is induced and that is acceleration will be in the opposite direction to the direction of the motion. So, the um, uh, unit acceleration is induced over here, unit acceleration is induced over here and unit acceleration induced over here uh, because of the, this displacement. The mass times uh, the unit acceleration that is m into unit acceleration will be the force, uh, inertia force that will be in, uh, induced due to the unit acceleration provided over here. Uh, here the force also will be equal to inertia force will be equal to mass times the unit acceleration and at this point also we will have an uh, inertia force which will be m by 2 uh, multiplied by the unit acceleration acting in the horizontal direction. 
since we do not have any degree of freedom declared at this point, the uh, mass time unit acceleration this force is decomposed uh, one in this direction uh, other in the direction along this member and this uh, force is finally transferred to this point. At this point now we have got two forces, one force along this, uh, the other force in the horizontal direction. Uh, we take the component of these two forces, one in the vertical direction that is the direction of uh, the uh, chosen uh, degree of freedom, translation and degree of freedom and the other along this member. So, the component of these two forces uh, which are acting along this member, they are finally transferred to this point and at this point uh, again we resolve those two forces one in the horizontal direction other in the vertical direction. The forces uh, which are resolved in the vertical direction they pass through the column to the support. Here also the force which was uh, existing uh, in the vertical direction because of the resolution of this force uh, that is also passed to the support. Uh, the uh, forces uh, which are uh, the um, existing over here uh, that is three forces, one force is this one plus the two forces uh, which are the components uh, of the forces coming from this point uh, and uh, act, uh, resolved in this direction. These three forces are added together and uh, these three forces would be equal to by definition m11 that is the inertia force produced at this point due to the unit acceleration over here. Similarly, the two vertical forces or the component of the uh, vertical forces in these directions uh, that were obtained, uh, these uh, two forces together uh, will give rise to m21 that is the forces generated at this point due to the unit acceleration produced over here. So, these two forces were uh, found to be is equal to 2.5 uh, and 1.67 and so uh, they are shown over here uh, uh, as the first uh, column and uh, 2.5 uh, is the force which is equal to m11 and 1.67 is the force which is equal to uh, the m21. Now, uh, if you are wanting to find out m22, uh, then uh, what we do? Uh, we give a unit vertical displacement uh, to this particular uh, point to the crown and log this. As a result of this, uh, this kind of uh, deformation takes place and the deformations uh, takes place in such a fashion so that the lengths of the member do not undergo any change. And uh, that can be conceived by with the help of an instantaneous center of rotation. Uh, if we extend this line and extend this line, uh, then they join over here and this point is the instantaneous center of rotation. And uh, this as a set square, this triangle as a set square, if we give a, a rotation uh, at this particular point, uh, then uh, this point will move perpendicular to the member uh, for small displacement theory. This point will move perpendicular to this member uh, according to the small displacement theory and they do not undergo any change in length because they are moving perpendicular uh, to the members. And uh, if the two sides uh, they do not undergo any change in length, then the third side also will not undergo any change. Therefore, this length which was there initially the same length remains over here. Uh, so, the condition of inextensibility is maintained. Similarly, since this member is moving perpendicular to this member, there is no change in length and also since this member is moving perpendicular to it then there is no change in length of this member. So, thus 
by giving uh, this kind of, of movement, uh, we can ensure uh, that the condition of inextensibility is satisfied. Now, uh, the, this point uh, not only moves vertically down, but also moves horizontally or in other words, this point moves perpendicular to this. Now, one can find out that for a given displacement on this side, so that there is a unit acceleration produced in the vertical direction, uh, we will have a component of that acceleration in this inclined direction mass times or m by 2 multiplied by that acceleration will be the force induced over here. Similarly, mass times the acceleration which will be produced over here uh, because of the unit acceleration given over here uh, will be the force which will be acting in the horizontal direction at this point. Since there is uh, no uh, degree of freedom which is defined at this point, uh, these horizontal force will be decomposed one into the vertical direction which will straight away go to the support. The other force uh, will be dissolved in this direction. Uh, this will be transferred to this particular point and then uh, this particular force which is acting along this member plus this force, uh, these two forces will be resolved one in the vertical direction, other along the direction of this member. The component of these two forces in the vertical direction by definition will be equal to m22 that is the inertia force developed at this particular point in the vertical direction due to the unit acceleration given uh, to the crown in the vertical direction. And the component of the two forces which will be acting along this member is finally transferred to this point. The horizontal component of the, those two forces when will be added together will give the force which will be equal to uh, m12. So, uh, that is how one can find out the uh, forces and the uh, second uh, column of uh, these uh, uh, matrix uh, that is uh, uh, the matrix which is shown over here that is 1.67 and 2.5. Uh, they are the uh, forces that are uh, uh, the second column of the mass matrix. Uh, denoting m22 and m12 so in the similar fashion one can uh, obtain uh, the mass matrix for the uh, second model that is model 2 and here uh, we have the uh, degrees of freedom which are uh, defined uh, like this that is degree of freedom one degree of freedom over here other degree of uh, freedom over here. And uh, for that uh, one can uh, straight away uh, go to this particular figure uh, say uh, that uh, uh, in the in the case when we are considering uh, the this degree of freedom then we give a unit. Uh, or a give a displacement here such that unit acceleration is induced over here and uh, at this point we lock it and because of the unit uh, displaced or uh, uh, the displacement which is given over here uh, this point will move down and uh, we will have forces which will be induced over here and this force will be resolved or uh, will be equal to the force which is induced at this particular point uh, uh, because of the, uh, the uh, unit acceleration induced here. Uh, the force which is generated here uh, due to the movement of this point along this particular line, uh, this force will be resolved in uh, two particular uh, in, in this particular direction uh, that is uh, uh, the, uh, the force which will be 
will be acting at this will be resolved one in this direction other is in this direction and the force which will be resolved in this particular direction uh, will be ultimately transferred to this particular point and uh, uh, this component of this force in the horizontal direction will be is equal to m 2 1 and the other component of force which will be in the direction of the column that will simply pass through the column and go to the support. The component of uh, this force on this particular member along this member will finally be transferred to this particular point and this uh, force will be then resolved one in the vertical direction other in the horizontal direction. Uh, the, the component of the force which is in the vertical direction uh, will simply pass through the support and the horizontal component of the force will get added uh, to the previously calculated value of m 1 1 and uh, uh, the addition of these two values will be the final value of m 1 1. So, that way one can calculate m 1 1 and m 2 1 uh, for the model uh, 2 over here uh, which is shown uh, in this particular uh, figure and uh, if we look at uh, the mass matrix uh, the first column that is 1.406 and minus 0 0.156 uh, they are the forces inertia forces corresponding to the unit acceleration provided at degree of freedom 1 which is equal to 1.406 and that is m11 and minus 0 0.156 which is equal to uh, m21. Similarly, one can find out uh, the, um, uh, the second column of the mass matrix uh, by considering the unit displacement at the second degree of freedom locking the first one and dissolving the forces uh, in the same fashion uh, as we have uh, discussed before. Uh, the uh, i matrix or the i vector will be 1 1 in this case because, uh, uh, because of the horizontal uh, ground motion uh, for uh, the masses both at uh, the two ends uh, that is at B and D uh, the masses will be moving horizontally and therefore, uh, the i vector consists of 1 1. In the previous case for model 1 it was 1 and 0 that is uh, for the uh, mass at B uh, the mass moves in the horizontal direction, but the m by 2 mass which is acting at C uh, that mass uh, cannot undergo any uh, vertical movement therefore, uh, it i was equal to 1 and 0. Uh, if we uh, multiply the i vector with the mass matrix uh, then the effective uh, earthquake force for the two uh, degrees of freedom uh, for the uh, second model uh, they become 1.25 and 1.25. And uh, if uh, the uh, ground motions at the two supports are the same uh, then uh, B and D at B and D the uh, same displacement will take place and as a result of that effectively we will have only 1 degree of freedom and for that uh, the total mass will be equal to 2.5 as we can see from on the left hand side of the figure. And uh, the effective load vector minus m is equal to 1.25, 1.25 when these two components are added together then also we can see that the total mass uh, for the case of the same uh, excitation at uh, the two support uh, that turns out to be 2.5 m. So, that is how one can calculate uh, the mass matrices uh, for uh, uh, the different uh, types of uh, the degrees of freedom uh, that can be chosen for a uh, pitch to portal frame. And uh, uh, there could be uh, structures 
where uh, these uh, mass matrix even for the lump mass case uh, could be of this uh, type uh, that is they could be fully uh, populated and uh, uh, the this kind of mass matrix uh, arises uh, for or, or different uh, kinds of structures uh, with the uh, degree of freedom uh, chosen. That is uh, for a particular structure uh, if we choose the degrees of freedom in a different way uh, the it could be that the mass matrix can become diagonal. If we choose the degrees of freedom in some other way uh, then the mass matrix could be fully populated as we have seen uh, for the case of a three dimensional frame with a rigid uh, slab at the top. Uh, now, uh, let us uh, come to the equation of motion uh, uh, that we uh, write for multi support excitation. And uh, before we um, uh, come to that, uh, let me um, also explain to you how we can uh, derive the mass matrix uh, uh, that we have solved for the pitch roof portal frame uh, using the virtual work method. And uh, for that uh, we uh, take uh, this uh, figure again and in this figure uh, if we uh, consider the first case that is the case where we have a uh, translational degree of freedom defined here and a vertical degree of freedom defined at the crown. For that uh, we give a uh, displacement uh, to this particular degree of freedom locking this one and the displacement is given such that uh, the unit acceleration is produced at this particular point and uh, the unit acceleration all will, will be also produced at this point and also unit acceleration will be produced at this point. As a result of that uh, the uh, inertia forces that will be developed here will be equal to m into 1, here it will be m into 1 and uh, at the crown uh, the inertia force which will be developed is equal to uh, m by 2. Uh, now, let us say this is m 1 1 and this is m 2 1. So, in order to obtain m 1 1 uh, what we do we uh, give a virtual displacement of delta over here such that no movement takes place. So, then uh, there is a virtual displacement of delta which is uh, uh, at this point virtual displacement of delta which is at this point and again there will be virtual displacement delta. So, uh, we write down now the, the virtual work equation and the virtual work equation will be uh, m 1 1 into delta uh, that is the force uh, on the left hand side uh, which is uh, acting over here m 1 1 into delta multiplied by m 2 1 into 0, m 2 1 is this uh, vertical uh, uh, force and there is uh, no uh, vertical displacement therefore, m 2 1 multiplied by 0 and then uh, the you know, forces inertia forces uh, they will be acting and since the inertia forces are acting in the opposite direction then it becomes minus m into delta m into delta for this mass m into delta for this mass. So, this becomes minus 2 m into delta and uh, here uh, the inertia force is acting in this direction m by 2 and the delta is in this direction again we write down minus m by 2 into delta and uh, that becomes equal to 0 and from there one can derive m 1 1 to be is equal to 2.5 m which we got also in the previous case. Uh, in order to obtain uh, the m 2 1 uh, what is done is that we give a unit displacement uh, to 
this uh, degree of freedom in the vertical direction and making sure that there is no uh, the making sure that there is no extension of the member or maintaining the inextensibility condition. And as a result of that, uh, this moves by delta, this moves by 4 delta by 3 and uh, this horizontal displacement uh, becomes equal to 2 delta by 3. So, these are all or this can these are all uh, all uh, arising uh, uh, because of the geometry uh, of uh, the uh, the movement uh, of this uh, particular uh, pitch to portal frame uh, considering an instantaneous rotation over here now uh, once we get uh, that uh, then one can write down m11 into 0 because uh, uh, the here there is no displacement. So, m 11 will be multiplied by 0 uh, plus m 21 into delta uh, that is m 21 is acting in this direction and we have given a virtual displacement of delta over here. So, m 21 into delta then minus m by 2 into 2 delta by 3. Uh, the inertia force which is acting over here is equal to minus m by 2 and the uh, displacement that takes place over here is 2 delta by 3. So, this is minus m by 2 into 2 delta by 3 and uh, then uh, this mass uh, this force undergoes a displacement of 4 delta by 3. So, we multiply minus m into 4 delta by 3. So, that uh, gives uh, m to 1 to be equal to 5 by 3 or is equal to 1.67 uh, which you got uh, uh, in the previous calculation also. Uh, in this particular in this way one can also find out m 22 and m 11. So, using the uh, method of virtual work uh, one can also obtain the mass matrix uh, of a particular uh, system if it is not a a diagonal mass matrix. Now, uh, uh, before we uh, start the multi support excitation, um, uh, let me uh, physically explain the difference uh, between the uh, uh, single support excitation and the multi support excitation and also uh, explicitly uh, mention the difference between the two uh, in so far as, as the quasi static displacements uh, that are, are induced at the non support degrees of freedom uh, because of the single support excitation and the multi support excitation. And for that let us uh, uh, take uh, these uh, two figures. In the first figure uh, the all the supports are undergoing the same displacement. Uh, as a result of that the quasi static displacement at this point and at this point will be same as x g. The relative displacement of these two points with respect to the support will be caused by the inertia force time varying inertia force and therefore, at every instant of time t we will have a relative displacement u 1 at this point and u 2 at this point. So, the total displacement uh, at this point and this point will be is equal to u 1 t which will be equal to u 1 that is the relative displacement caused due to the inertia force with respect to the base plus x g that is the quasi static displacement. Uh, uh, which will be added to that. Uh, this will be mind you this is also a function of time t it varies at every instant of time t. Similarly, u 2 t will be equal to u 2 plus x g because uh, the same ground displacement will be passed on to this uh, support or uh, this uh, non support degree of freedom and this non support degree of freedom. Uh, as a result of that uh, the if we take the difference between the total displacements of these two points 
uh, then the, the difference between the two uh, total displacements will be same as the difference between the two relative displacements. And in working out the bending moment, shear force, etcetera, we generally require uh, the relative displacement of one point with respect to the other. And if the total uh, uh, the relative displacement considering the total displacements and considering the relative displacement they remain the same, then there is no need for writing down the equation of motion in terms of the total displacement we can write down the equation of motion in terms of the relative displacements. And that is why uh, for single support excitation, uh, we have written down the equation of motion uh, in the uh, relative uh, uh, displacement coordinate uh, with the right hand side uh, having the mass time uh, acceleration and the, this is pre of course, pre multiplied by the influence coefficient vector. Now, when we come to the uh, multi support excitation, uh, then uh, the we see that the ground displacements uh, that are there uh, are different at different supports. Now, this is uh, equivalent to a differential support movement problem. That means, at any instant of time t, x g 1, x g 2 and x g 3 will be different leading to a differential support movement problem. And this differential support movement will give rise to certain stresses within the members and also some displacement at this level and at this level. Now, this can be obtained by purely a static analysis, uh, which can be performed at time at any instant of time t in order to find out the displacement that takes place at this point and at this point because of the differential uh, displacement of the supports. Obviously, that uh, uh, to that those two displacements will be a function of x g 1, x g 2 and x g 3. And let us say uh, for uh, the first floor uh, that displacement which is caused uh, due to the differential uh, displacement of these three points is uh, written as u bar 1 x g. Similarly, one can find out at point 2 uh, a, mm, a displacement produced due to this differential support movement and uh, that will be a function of again another function of x g 1, x g 2 and x g 3 and let us say that is equal to u bar 2 x g. Now, since u bar 1 x g and u bar 2 x g uh, they are different. Uh, uh, therefore, the total displacement when we will be obtaining for u 1 and u 2 uh, for that the relative displacement u 1 which is caused due to the inertia action uh, with respect to the support uh, that u 1 when we add to uh, u bar 1 x g uh, then the u 1 uh, t that is the total displacement at this point is obtained. Similarly, uh, for this point uh, we get the total displacement at as u 2 plus u bar 2 x g that becomes the total displacement. Now, when we deduct uh, uh, these two displacement or total displacement between these two points in order to find out the displacement of one point with respect to the other to find out the stresses or bending stresses. Then you find that that does not become equal to u 2 minus u 1 because u bar uh, 1 x g and u bar 2 x g will not cancel with each other. As a result of that u 2 minus uh, u 2 t minus u 1 t will not be equal to u 2 minus u 1. And therefore, in order to get the bending uh, stresses in this particular member 
we have to know the values of the uh, total displacement at this flow level and at this flow level. And because of that reason, uh, the equation of motion uh, should be written in terms of the total displacement. Now, now let us see how we can find out uh, the displacement or the quasi static displacements uh, that are uh, obtained at this point and this point due to the differential uh, movement, support movement at this point, this point, this point. Say at any instant of time t, x g 1, x g 2 and x g 3 are the three displacements. And uh, because of these three displacement, uh, uh, the displacement which is caused over here is equal to u bar 1 x g and here it is u bar 2 x g. And that we are calling as s x 1 and s x 2 that is uh, the, uh, the non support degrees of freedom that is the structural displacement 1 and structural displacement 2. Now, considering all the degrees of freedom that is this degree of freedom, this degree of freedom, this also another degree of freedom, this is another degree of freedom, this is another degree of freedom. We have in all 5 degrees of freedom, we can write down a stiffness matrix. Uh, in terms of only the displacement degrees of freedom and in that uh, if the rotational degrees of freedom uh, are present then we uh, condense them out and finally, write down the stiffness matrix corresponding to these 5 degrees of freedom. And once we write down these uh, 5 degrees of uh, uh, these stiffness matrix with respect to these 5 degrees of freedom, then we partition them into non support degrees of freedom and the support degrees of freedom. Non support degrees of freedom are called say x x and the support degrees of freedom are called say x g uh, that is uh, these degrees of freedom. And uh, if we consider this partition matrix then one can write down k s s into x x x where k s s is uh, this matrix and k s g uh, is this matrix multiplied by x g that should be equal to 0. And uh, from there one can write down x x that is uh, the at the non support degrees of freedom the displacement produced due to x g which is known to us will be equal to minus k s s inverse k s g into x g. Uh, that is uh, the x x that is the displacement these two displacement can be obtained uh, from the known displacement uh, at these three points x g. Uh, we can write down x s in general to be equal to r into x g, where r is a matrix, uh, this matrix consisting of minus k s s inverse into k s g. So, for a given uh, frame, one can find out this r matrix very easily and uh, uh, then one can write down the um, uh, quasi static displacement uh, to be is equal to r times or r matrix times uh, the x g uh, that is the uh, 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 displacement uh, which is uh, which are taking place at the supports. And uh, in when you are you know, talking about the total displacement x t then this x t can be written as x plus r x g, where x is the displacement at the non support degrees of freedom uh, produced due to the inertia effect with respect to the base that is the relative displacement, relative dynamic displacement plus the quasi static component is r x g is the quasi static component of the displacement. These two displacement together get the value, we, uh, we get the value of x t. And uh, we write down the equation of motion in terms of x t and that is what is uh, shown over here. Uh, say uh, in this particular problem uh, the, uh, the first equation uh, the matrices m s s are the masses corresponding to the non support degrees of freedom. Uh, the m g g 
uh, that is the masses with uh, respect uh, uh, for the uh, support uh, or at the support and S G and G S uh, they are the coupling matrices and these will be uh, x double dot t and this is x double dot g, x double dot g are the ground accelerations uh, at the supports whereas, x double dot t is the total displacement uh, at the non support degrees of freedom. Similarly, C matrix and K matrix can be defined and uh, on the right hand side since there is no force external force acting we write it to be 0 and here at the supports if we consider soil structure interaction problem then there may be some forces uh, which may exist at the level of the support therefore, that force will be equal to um, uh, P uh, G G. Now, uh, this uh, force for the case of no soil set interaction will be equal to 0. Now, uh, uh, we substitute here uh, for x t, x t is equal to x plus r x g that what we have pro proved uh, before and uh, uh, once we substitute this, uh, then uh, this gives a uh, equation and in this equation we have got m s s into x double dot t plus m s g into uh, uh, x double dot g uh, uh, plus c s s into x double dot t plus c s g into uh, x double dot g plus k s s uh, into x g plus the one term missing over here uh, this will be equal to uh, k s g multiplied by x g. So, uh, this term uh, somehow other is missed out over here uh, it should be present. Uh, now, uh, if I uh, uh, keep all the total displacement terms on the left hand side uh, that is uh, associated with the non support degrees of freedom then the left hand side of the equation become m s s x double dot t plus c s s x dot t plus k s s x t is equal to minus m s g into x double dot g minus c s g into x dot g and minus k s g into x g. Now, uh, what we do for uh, the uh, multi support excitation problem, the coupling mass matrix M S G and C S G uh, they are generally ignored. In fact, uh, in most of the cases M G G uh, that is that turns out to be 0 for uh, no soil such interaction problem and M S G or these coupling uh, masses are also 0. Uh, therefore, one can uh, assume uh, m s g to be is equal to 0 and c s g also to be equal to 0 not contributing much uh, to the equation of motion. And if we ignore that then we get equation 3.15 in which uh, on the left hand side we have uh, all the quantities which are uh, the total uh, displacement, total velocity and total acceleration all in terms of the total motion the equation, uh, equation uh, is written. On the right hand side we have minus k s g into x g. Mind you k s g cannot be ignored, k s g is the coupling stiffness between the non support degrees of freedom and the support degrees of freedom uh, which can be uh, cal easily calculated. Thus, if we wish to solve uh, 3 point equation 3.15, then we need x g or the ground displacement uh, to be specified. And uh, then one can straight away obtain uh, the, uh, the displacement uh, as uh, the total displacement and from there uh, one can work out uh, the uh, any other uh, quantities of or uh, interest or any other response. Now, if you are wanting to 
write down the same equation in terms of the relative displacements. Uh, then we rearrange this equation 3.15 uh, by uh, substituting for x t with the help of equation 3.12. And once we do that, uh, then on the left hand side we keep all the quantities uh, in terms of the relative motion that is x, x dot and x double dot. And on the right hand side we bring in um, MSS into R uh, which will be coming uh, from this relationship and uh, CSS into R and KSS into R. And uh, we see that on the right hand side we have uh, uh, these uh, all these uh, three terms which are uh, associated with the ground displacement, ground velocity and ground acceleration. Now, since uh, the definition of R was equal to minus K S S inverse K S G into X G, from that one can easily show that K S S uh, into X S plus K X G into X G that is equal to 0. And therefore, uh, in equation 3.16 uh, this term becomes equal to 0. Uh, next what we do is that we uh, assume that C S G which was assumed to be 0 in the previous case and the component of C S S into R uh, that basically also do not uh, contribute much to the response. Uh, as a result of that uh, we uh, ignore uh, this particular uh, quantity. Now, uh, for many problems however, uh, one may not set it to be uh, 0, one may keep uh, one may set C S G to be 0, but one may keep C S S into R. In that case, uh, we should have also the ground velocity to be specified. However, uh, it has been found that for uh, lightly damped system, the C S G plus R into C S S, uh, they turn out to be almost equal to 0 or their effect uh, on the solution is very negligible. Therefore, the entire thing uh, is uh, assumed as 0. And uh, so far as the mass uh, term is concerned, the M S G is uh, assumed as 0 as before and therefore, we have the equation 3.19 where we write down the equation of motion in terms of the relative uh, motion of the structure that is relative displacement, relative velocity and relative acceleration. And on the right hand side you have got minus m s s r into m x double dot g. The motivation uh, behind writing the equation of motion in terms of relative displacement and representing it in the form of equation 3.19. Uh, is to bring a similarity uh, of the equation of motion uh, that exist uh, between a single point excitation system and the multi point support excitation system. Or in other words, we try to represent the multi support excitation system equation of motion in the same way as we define for the single point excitation system. Um, uh, here the difference is only that for the multi support excitation system, uh, the MSS or the mass matrix is multiplied by a not influence coefficient matrix I, but uh, a R matrix which is also influence coefficient matrix, but this influence coefficient matrix R is to be uh, computationally obtained uh, by uh, solving uh, a static problem or in other words by uh, solving the frame uh, problem uh, by uh, a using a matrix uh, method uh, in which we will find out the values of the non support degrees of freedom uh, in terms of the, uh, the degrees of freedom which are existing at the supports. And that gives the R matrix and the how we have obtained the R matrix that I had 
uh, shown before. So, thus uh, the uh, mass multiplied by the R matrix into x double dot g vector uh, that gives the p effective or the uh, effective earthquake force. Now, this concept uh, is explained uh, with the help of uh, uh, this uh, problem equation 3.14. Uh, in this uh, problem, we are wanting to find out the R matrix uh, for the frame given in figure 3.7. Here, uh, uh, this is a shear frame and for this shear frame, we have the degrees of freedom, 2 degrees of freedom at the non-support degrees of freedom and uh, at the 3 supports, we have got 3 uh, degrees of freedom. Uh, therefore, we can uh, easily write down the stiffness matrix and partition them. So, that K S S is the stiffness matrix corresponding to non-support degrees of freedom U 1 and U 2 and uh, K S G is the coupling matrix. So, using uh, the uh, uh, coupling matrix K S G and K S S, one can find out the R uh, matrix. Uh, and the R matrix is uh, computed uh, like this and uh, we see that R matrix uh, for this problem is equal to 1 third 1 1 1 that is uh, for, for all the for this particular problem uh, the influence of all the 3 degrees of freedom are the same on the non support degrees of freedom. Uh, for the inclined leg portal frame. Uh, uh, that we have uh, discussed uh, before for which we had obtained the mass matrix uh, that also uh, was uh, solved over here. And uh, here uh, again we obtain the values of, of the uh, um, uh, K R R K S S and uh, then uh, we uh, condensed out on the rotational degrees of freedom. And after that, we uh, obtain uh, the uh, 2 plus 2 uh, 4 translational degrees of freedom with, res uh, with respect to that, we obtain the uh, stiffness matrix that is the condensed stiffness matrix. Then this was partitioned uh, to the uh, non-support degrees of freedom and support degrees of freedom. And uh, this is the stiffness matrix corresponding to the non-support degrees of freedom and uh, this is the coupling matrix between the support degrees of freedom and non-support degrees of freedom. And uh, then we obtain the R matrix in the same uh, fashion as before. Uh, so, one can uh, obtain the uh, uh, different for different degrees of freedom uh, the uh, R matrix and the corresponding M matrix. Thank you.